recordings. Hello, everyone. Welcome to our regular DevSync uh, at Subspace Labs. We'll talk about the progress on the development from the previous week and plans for the upcoming week. Luchain, do you want to start today? Yeah, of course. So last week, I was probably working on the last pieces of the initial version of Exactor, which is enough to be deployed publicly including checking the signature and the signer of the ex 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 execution receipts on the pharmacide and allow only the initial like, ex executor to produce vendors as well. Um, now I think the only missing feature is to track the execution receipts on farmers properly I have created a thread on Discord about this topic, but you know, it's still a homework in progress. After implementing this part, I think it's time to think about how to launch the executor chain. So my main focus this week is to push this initial executor deployment. So hopefully we'll get everything done for this goal in this week. Yeah, that's all from my side. Hey, Lu Cheng, I saw your comments in there. Um, and uh, I think it's going to be best if we have a discussion over that uh, versus doing it asynchronously. So I just sent, sent out a meeting invite uh, for, for you and the czar and Sam and I. If that doesn't work, okay. we can coordinate another time uh, async yeah. or all, 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 outside the meeting. Awesome. Uh, any other questions to Lu Cheng? All right, uh, Ved. Uh, hey, everyone. Last week uh, was mostly uh, implementing one small change uh, to the feeds palette. Uh, we were not actually doing any block validation and uh, we were taking extensives as they are. So we we figured, we wanted to do that particular check and along with some basic checks for the feeds. Uh, that is in, and the rest of the week was mostly writing documentation and getting that in uh, for the feeds palette uh, and how the feed processor looks like, how the feed processor looks like and what are the implementations of uh, different implementations of feed process as an example, like, uh so that's that that's landed uh we also identified one small thing uh nazar identified that we are not doing any validations uh when we are actually extracting the blocks in the feeds itself that's a super small one but i'm doing a doing a bit of research into like if we can figure out a way to check if the extensic has successfully was successful so that we can actually import index it down the line so I'm just thinking if that could be one other uh, way of doing it, but uh, I want to focus a bit more on that. And I spoke to Lu Shang on Friday. I want to see if I can do some small, handle some minor topics on the protocol itself with uh, Lu Shang on the decoupled execution, just to see if I can get my hands set in that. Uh, it's again that is more like most likely not a priority, but just just as a uh, just as a you know, curiosity thing. Okay, and uh, as it uh, as it relates to the uh, feeds uh, to the relayer deployment, um, is everything going well there? Uh, yeah. So we would need to start the the relayer deployment. I'm I, I'm not sure who's going to be the uh, the lead point on deploying the relayer itself to the DO and connect the remaining dots. Uh, that is something that I'm not sure if if I if I can take it I can do it I I'll just need to access uh, the DO the solution droplets to figure that one out and I think we can start really there. So so we're trying to do like um, get all of this out of everyone's head. So like I'm happy for you to take the lead, but can you keep me like in the loop and also document it? Because what I found was that like um, again things are always changing and everything is in flux. But I tried to look at deploying early and just close the screen because it didn't make a lot of sense. So if we can, 
yeah, so that's one of my priorities this week is um, making sure that all our deployment documents and processes are up to up to um, up to scratch. And I will talk. Uh, uh, let me let me just bring this up now. Is that um, also the way we move our infrastructure and everything? It should all be through Terraform as well through infrastructure as code, which the current thing doesn't lend itself to. So take for example, search created a ticket to to um, delete some digital ocean buckets. All I should have to do is change the Terraform, like delete, like delete those lines of Terraform and delete it automatically. But we don't have that yet. So I'm going to spend tonight getting it to that form. And Ved, I really appreciate it if we can work hand in hand to get the really documentation and process, deployment process to that state so we can close on that. So I'm going to be working on that today. I think so, it's and, more of a surge if you want to actually get instructions of how to deploy yeah. because... That is not aware of that either. I have I have no clue about Relayer. Uh, so, what, so, so who could be the lead person to? So, so why were you Relayer. pretending? Why were you pretending like you knew it? I was just looking. You're going, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, I was gonna say I was gonna like I think Nazar spoke before, but Lee, uh, so search would be the right person if you are looking for that. That's why I was asking the question. Like, you can be three. Th there could be three of you on that like meeting or whatever, to you, so you can like all be aware of what's happening. Yeah, ideally, Serge will download his brain into into you, Sam, and Ved. Ved, you will actually implement it, and Sam, you'll document it, um, and and you can take ownership of actually be the responsible individual, Ved, for making sure that this gets deployed. Because Serge is, we're trying to get Serge more focused on the desktop app and getting getting that. Um, you know, there's a lot, there's a huge backlog of issues there. And so uh, the less time we can have him spend on sort of the deployment side of the relayer, the better. Okay. Uh, okay, and for, for this week? Uh, yeah, so uh, uh, for this week, mostly focus on the deployment process uh, for the relayer. And uh, I, I also wanna pick up some topics on the protocol side with Lushang. Uh, but again, not a priority. Uh, again, uh, there's also one small issue that we identified on the feed. I want to fix that one up as well. Most likely focus on these three items with priority on the deployment on the feeds. So just while we're on the topic of feeds validation, so what, I guess, what is the current state of, of the deployment? What What, what is the, the immediate next step? Uh, the immediate next step, just get the dump from Sergey and create a deployment process and deploy the relayer. And no, oh, sorry, I mean with regard to the actual. So did we did we set up the machine? I remember yes. that was a lot. Of, okay. Yes. Did we deploy. So, Go ahead. Uh, so I'm working currently on this, and uh, yeah, Sam created machine, and also helped me with setting up uh, nginx, and today I copied uh, archives. Uh, to the new machine and uh, I already tested like uh, the node and nodes and farmer and uh, I just need to um, start relayers so it's almost ready like 90 percent okay and we set we set the block height at which feeds validation will start uh no I will just pick like a random latest block Okay, we don't have to have that set up at initialization. We can do it later. Yeah, and the uh, archives are already like uh, downloading, storing blocks with justification. Okay, okay thanks, bud. Uh, I guess uh, so. You can just continue with your updates. Um. Yeah, so on, on feed validation, uh, PR for Relayer was merged. Uh, everything was tested locally. Uh, seems to work. And uh, yeah, currently I'm working on deployment. Uh, Sam's helping me on, on operations side. And um, yeah, on parachains, uh, I don't think, yeah, there were no up no new parachains onboarded uh, over the last weekend, but I keep an eye on five new chains that are about to start uh, producing blocks. Uh, 
yeah, there was some some strange behavior on test A, uh, which is currently public uh, environment like relay net. Uh, but yeah, I restarted uh, relayers uh, a couple of times. Currently, it works okay. But yeah, I will probably need to allocate some time for uh, investigation. And uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to start uh, working on desktop. And we discussed yesterday, uh, last week, we discussed like some priorities. So I will start uh, tomorrow. I believe that's all. All right, uh, other questions to search? Awesome, Moskan, uh, you're next. Okay, so um, we had a small bug in subspace desktop for the version 041, in which the plotting started was not remembered, and usual users will always starting from the scratch, like the initial page. Uh, we fixed that, and it's been released as um, 0.4.2. But there was another issue with uh, the version display. So uh, I also fixed that issue for uh, 0.4.2. Now we are uh, displaying the version dynamically. I hard coded it in the first place for test purposes. Now it's dynamically shown. Um, multi replica tests are done. Like I've tested with 10 gigabyte, it worked. Um, also, during the process of uh, Reflecting the latest changes from Monorepo to the multi replica, we discovered a bug with Nazar. Uh, he fixed it immediately on the Monorepo side, so I made the necessary changes in the Tower side. Um, basically, it was related to runtime upgrade, does not work when it started from Genesis, but hopefully, it fixed very, very uh, quickly. Um, other than that, we decided to let go of the public API requests from subspace desktop. And it's been removed from the setup plot page, so it will not uh, query the RPC node from for the uh, blockchain size. Um, the more changes needs to be done for the plotting progress page. Uh, the work is in progress on there, so it's not finalized. Um, so we also had a lot of arrangements on the GitHub issues and project board, along with Serge and Jeremiah. I edited the labels and simplified them. Issues are reorganized. Uh, they are updated with more descriptive titles, comments, and tasks. And just today, I started on uh, implementing the external config file. So. We had a huge problem of storing the metadata in the application itself. So when we uninstalled the application and reinstall it, the metadata was getting lost and the existing plot were not getting remembered by the new version of the application. The most uh, primitive solution for that is to store an external file, external configuration file, so that we can store the information in there and the application can uh, remember the necessary information, for example, the reward address, the plot size, the plot files themselves, blah, blah, blah. Uh, so I started on implementing that. And uh, for the next couple of days, uh, I think I will be occupied by that. All right, any known blockers from the Monorepo site or otherwise? No, no, everything is going fine. There are no blockers on desktop. Uh, I have a question. For Justin, though, Justin, you just reported that um, the seed is not displayed or shown um, in Windows, I believe. is Was that for 0 0.4.3? Yes, it is. Um, okay. So That's... I had to reinstall it because it got corrupted because of my Docker installation expanding too far. Um, but now I can't restart it. I'm getting the, I'm stuck on the start plotting screen and it asked me to create the directory. I click confirm and then nothing happens. Okay, can we sync after this meeting, if yeah. you have time? Okay, good. I've got like about an hour, but yeah. Okay. All right, any other questions to Oscar? Okay, Ivan, what's happening on your side? Yeah, sure. Uh, so for 
from my side, there are a bunch of like minor issues, one of which were like penalizing the pull requests related to the uh, penalizing like opening uh, different plots on the farmer. Um, so yeah, it was hopefully finalized. Apart from that, there were uh, there was a minor a minor issue related to the adding like wipe uh, command for a farmer like description into the readme. Um, so yeah, also that was landed. Uh, apart from that, we discussed with Nazar like um, possibility of adding the max plot size flag for like easy testing of the uh, of, of the plotting. So that basically lets us to overwrite the uh, maximum size of a single plot on the farmer. Um, so apart from that, uh, uh, another power was landed, uh, which was related to the optimizing solution finding. Basically, uh, beforehand we for for sending the solution of the challenges from the farmer to node we basically looked up like all of the possible solutions uh in our like commitments uh, database uh and just picked like um the, the first one uh yeah but we also collected the the rest um for for just in case uh and right now uh, we uh, we're um we're picking up like 10 first solution and picking up the the best uh, out of those. So basically we're picking the, the one which is closest to the target. Um, yeah. And as for the uh, major issues, um, yeah, I, I was uh, testing under like various circumstances, the uh, plotting or plotting the, um, the one terabyte plot. And basically I, I discovered what, what was the issue related to that. Um, yeah, the, the, the issue was that, uh, the issue of the slowdown of the overplotting was that like we, we have uh, like n full plots, um, so we have some amount of the full, full plots and one partial one, and we're basically throttled at the time uh, when we fill up the, the last partial plot. Um, so after that issue is discovered, uh, we had some ideas with Nazar on how to fix that. Um, yeah, and we like yeah, we we would uh, think up I guess after the after this meeting or like maybe tomorrow about that not discuss but uh, yeah but but apart from that I also benchmarked um, the adding the um, adding in the victim uh, like pieces in, on the full plot which is already plotted um, yeah and uh, I and and it ended up that. Um, the slow path was that um, removing the furthest piece out of the like just the RocksDB database. Um, so uh, I thought about like adding the caching for that, and it, it uh, ended up like uh, benefiting in the, like performance wise. So um, yeah, let me just share a screen like to, to give some rough idea on that. Uh, uh, give me a second. Uh -huh. So here it is. Um, so yeah, this uh, this pull request is still draft. So the thing is, like beforehand, we had um, some something like this as the as for our flame graph. The the main idea of of this flame graph is that um, the, uh, the the wider uh, like the, the line is, uh, the more time it takes. So basically. We have the, the run function here, and uh, in which, like most of the time, uh, is taken by the write encodings function, and the most of the time of this is taken by the removing uh, furthest, um, removing a furthest, yeah, um, piece, uh, and in that we, the most of the time is taken by the updating the max distance, uh, yeah. Um, so basically, I decided to to add a simple cache into that. Uh, and the performance boost was like something like that. So beforehand, we have we had the um, um, this line uh, of the length like this. So from from here to here, um, yeah. And here it is it is already here. Um, so so yeah. Uh, it okay, takes, but uh, we have a bunch of other lines instead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But but the point is that uh, like the 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 graph itself it scaled down. So. Um, yeah, and and like performance-wise, uh, it also got uh, way faster. Like uh, beforehand, it took around like 30 seconds or something for for plotting a single segment. 
uh, but now it takes like five seconds or something. And uh, it's still, um, I, I didn't research it yet, but it's like a constant for, for caching here. I, I just added it, yeah, can can find it. Yeah, but we, we might change it to, to, to some other amount. Yeah, here it is. I just set it to, to 100, just, just in case, but we, we might want to change it like to 10,000 10, or something. Uh, yeah, it okay. might be a good idea to test. Um, so apart apart from that, uh, I also did um, so, some things related to the DSN. Basically, we discussed uh, that thing with, with Nazar. Uh, I also working on the editing support of like specifying and um, making the network identities permanent and like um, letting uh, different plots have um, um, have each uh, network identity on its own uh, for like future. Uh, future changes um, for for not syncing from the uh, from the academia uh, of, of the plots. Um, so yeah, that's all from my side. That was a lot. Hopefully, it makes sense to people. <laughs> yes. So, sorry, that was quick. Uh, Ivan, is are you guys free to sync after this with to, with me to talk about the the plotting in more detail? Sure. Yeah. Okay, great. Sorry, can I can I be added? Can I be added sure. to that call, please? Yeah, absolutely. Okay, any other immediate questions, Stevan? No, everything is moved to the next call. Okay, uh, Justin. Yeah. Um, so last week, I was working with the community team to, to continue to be more get more tuned in with the support workflow that Sam has been working so hard to get established for us. Um, so far, it's been going well. We're just kind of getting those habits built and everything. Also worked with Way to establish some basic like SLAs and KPIs that we wanted to start measuring um, for level two to just kind of start measuring our our performance so we can kind of continue to improve and iterate on our uh, performance for our community as well. Um, also had the new snapshots that Nazar prepared for the new release that we're preparing for. Um, been testing that out pretty rigorously. Had some minor issues with Docker uh, on Friday, but we got that sorted out. And so far, I haven't had any issues on both 10 gigabyte plots and 100 gigabyte plots. Um, well, to be fair, I ran out of space on my laptop on the 100 gigabyte plot at about 95, so I need to clear that up to make sure it fully plotted plots. Um, but up to that point, it was running just fine. Um, and also working on testing out subspace desktop. Uh, as Osgun mentioned, ran back into a prior bug that we thought we resolved. Um, it looks like it's back. We're going to sync up and get that hopefully resolved after this meeting. Um, moving forward into this week, um, hoping to get subspace desktop finished up so we can get the team running that and get that up, latest update released because we're a couple versions behind on that currently. Um, obviously, we've been moving pretty quickly on adding new features and resolving issues on that one. Um, and then I believe Jeremiah mentioned he wanted me to test the one terabyte plots on these multi-replica update for the snapshot. Um, so that's what I've been working on trying to get running. Um, just having some minor permission issues with Docker and the external drive. Um, but once I get that fixed up, we should be good to get that tested and finished up um, as far as that, that goes. Um, and yeah, uh, beyond that, moving, this, moving forward this week, just going to be continuing to try and document um, and get the rest of the level team, level two team up to date with uh, what me and Wei talked about last week as far as KPIs and SLAs go. Um, and yeah, just get the, get prepared for these next updates we got coming up. Uh, as it relates to the, to the upcoming snapshot, uh, which operating systems did you already test? So I've been testing on Docker on Windows and then uh, Ubuntu. Okay, so Windows and Mac are not tested yet. Do you uh, think I haven't. Test them? Yeah, let me verify that uh, Mac's okay, but Windows should be just fine. Um, well, on Windows, we've actually changed the uh, command line parameters to use the native runtime. I've okay. actually uh, synced it fully on my VM, so I think it's okay. Okay, I'll, um, I will double check. But if you can then. like make at least quick tests that it like starts and starts syncing, I think we should be good to go. Just Perfect. like sanity check. Will do. Um, but yeah, Ubuntu has been been great so far, and I'll do a, a quick check on Mac as well um, to make sure that there's no major issues there. All right, and those were our syncs from Genesis, right? Yes. Not upgrades, okay. 
Yeah. No, I mean, yeah. we do not official document that, that upgrades are possible, but they kind of are. Uh, okay. Yeah, anytime I test, I usually do it from Genesis just to make sure. Awesome. All right, any other questions to uh, Justin? Yeah, uh, Justin, something you said uh, made me wonder, uh, it's more a question of Oskin uh, or maybe Nazar. Do we have a, a release or a pre-release, I guess, of the subspace desktop that does not have multi-replica farming that is uh, tested, that works, that we can designate as our as our latest? We so, are trying to do that for 0 0.4.3. So it's the actually latest pre-release, not latest, latest, but uh, you get the idea. It's the most top item in the uh, branch, sorry, in the repository. So ma there are no uh, releases with multi-replica at the moment. Okay, but the, pre the, the, the one you're talking about will have multi-replica, the pre-release? No. 0.4.3? No. Okay. So 0 0.4.3 is kind of like the last final version that we'll do prior to multi-replica. And that's mm -hmm. the version that had the new issue that popped back up that we thought we resolved. So that's why we just haven't marked it latest just yet. Um, and then Osgun had built multi-replica as 5.0, but I think he ended up deleting that release. Yeah, uh, to get rid of confusions, I deleted that. Uh, it was a mistake to build it in the GitHub first place. It was for testing purposes, so we can forget about it. But multi-replica will have the label 0 0.5.0. OK, I just want to make sure that um, we do get a, an up-to-date version of full replica farming out to the users to incorporate all these changes that we've got, but I don't want to be releasing multi-replica as an official release until we've had a, had a chance to test that more thoroughly. And, 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 and also, like, what logic are we using to bump up the major server number? Because at this rate, we, we're five, we're, f we're five, sorry, we're five major, sorry, Sorry. So about five major releases to we hit 1.0. So it would be interesting to see what the logic behind that is. Ah, like. uh, we are not. There is nothing that prevents you have 0 0.23.1. So it's not decimal numbers with floating point. That's no. Or we can yeah, just we keep from 0 0.6 to 1, right? We can, absolutely. We'll have so many minor releases as we need. Yeah, Sem Semver is a nice island in the sky. It would be great if you could get us there, Sam. No, that's actually Semver. Like, it doesn't limit the second, like, minor thing to single digit. It can be, like, five digits. No, no, no. I, no, no. I understand that, but I want to understand the logic. If multi-replica makes 0 0.4, 0 0.5, then what kind of feature is going to make 0 0.5? So what is a major, what is a minor? And But there, I guess that's just um, bike shedding at this point. It's uh, subjective, as Osgood feels. Yeah, but uh, uh, my mindset is like that. So if it's a small bug fix, uh, I increment the latest, most least significant digit. If it's a new feature, which is like a partial replica or multi-replica, I increment the uh, middle digit. And when we have a full stable working, like everybody approves, this is the most stable final version, then we will have version one. Okay, I think okay. I guess that makes sense to everyone. Uh, the other question I had, Justin, you said that you tested a hundred gigabyte plot, but to be clear, that's like actual five gigabytes of space that's being used, or is that a full hundred gigabyte plot? Um, well, my computer said that up to ninety-five gigs was taken. It could have been blank data, but um, that was with the Docker Compose file having hundred gigs as set as the spot. Um, if you remember, 100 gig is actually like 103 gig. Yeah, uh, it like, should not be. No, uh, that's actually taken care of. It's not. It's right now limited in the protocol. So it, it doesn't use more than you specify. OK, so we need to update docs then. Because all over the docs, it still says that there's that little extra bit. Well, you, you need to add 10 gigabytes for the node, not the farmer. Um, but okay, yeah, but... 
Go ahead. Go ahead, Jim. I was going to say my I don't I didn't see it finished, so I just know that when I came back, my computer had had filled up the remaining space that it had left. I think uh, it was something else. It shouldn't take that much. Okay, I'll investigate that as well. Um, see if, what's going on there. Docker's been getting so if, some trouble. So if we have a plot right now that is not full, does it um, does it look on the di to the file system like the whole space has been allocated, no. or just what's been written no. to you? Just what's been written. Okay. So I think it just had several nodes, like files left from one node, and then maybe the other one, and something taken by the system, and just runs out of space. Yeah, that's very likely. Um, all right, I will investigate that as well, then, and see what happened there. Okay. Thanks, Justin. Uh, okay, Shamil, can you maybe tell us a few words about your onboarding on the technical side right now? Okay, I am reading the onboarding guys. Uh, I'm going to finish the first stage this week and we'll have a um, sync call with Jeremiah this Friday. That's it. Uh, Shamel, it's actually Tuesday and Thursday, I believe, that I sent you invites. Okay, then Thursday, saw, no problem. I saw you accepted, so I just uh, want to no make problem, sure that still works for you. Okay. Okay. All right, the first stage is uh, Ethereum and Bitcoin, right? And Polkadot. All right, yeah. Okay. Uh, on my side, uh, if you're talking about the code, uh, I was doing several preparations for the release. And I think we are there. We just need to click a button after Justin gives the green light. I just think we almost have, just didn't click the button just yet. Um, related to that also was doing some improvements for the port selection so that we have fallback to random port once the port is already occupied. This will help for people that are running multiple farmers and they have multiple uh, farmers competing for the same port for the built-in RPC server, which is not critical in most cases, but it was failing because of that, uh, causing confusion. Uh, there was a small problem, as uh, Osgan mentioned, with the runtime API uh, when syncing from Genesis on the new software and there was uh, some tweaking for the canonical directories. Uh, initially, the subspace node was actually deriving the path where the data is stored for it uh, from the name of the executable, which means for every snapshot, you'll have a separate directory. And when you upgrade, you'll have a separate directory. So it never, never conflicts. But again, it never deletes the data. Uh, so I've actually uh, made that uh, to be canonical, just subspace nodes, regardless of what executable is called, and added uh, the code that will clean up all directories if you actually follow the upgrade guide. So if you're on uh, the wipe command, it will actually delete the old ones as well uh, to free you space for you. Um, and uh, then there was uh, another pull request, which was for adding support to build snapshots manually uh, without creating a snapshot as such. So you can just take any commit on any branch and you can just uh, call uh, the workflow and it will build uh, executables for that uh, branch. Uh, you can build runtime, you can build the uh, the binaries and that will be helpful, very helpful for the testing purposes. So don't have to annoy those who are subscribed to the repository uh, with new test snapshots or just notifications or any other kind of confusion. And I think this is something we need to have on the desktop side as well. So you can just trigger it on any branch anytime you want. You can pull those from the build artifacts and you can test them, but you don't need to like uh, announce it uh, more widely. Um, and uh, I think that was the most of it. Um, I was also working on uh, a lot of reviews for the code. And uh, I was uh, started work on the presentation for WASM conference, which is due uh, by the end of this week. And... Uh, yeah, there were several interviews. There was something else I, I, I cannot recall even right now. Uh, but I think the biggest goal for this week is to just release uh, finally this uh, new update, make an announcement about it. And uh, once I'm done with the presentation and some other stuff, I will be working on uh, the improving reward frequency with some basic system of voting. Uh, we had a preliminary discussion with Jeremiah. I think I have an idea of how to do it, uh, like the first version. Uh, so I'll try to get it done as soon as I can, but uh, next week, week we have offsite, so I'm not sure I'll be able to finish, uh, but I'll do my best. 
any questions about any of what I said? Okay, everyone is quiet. Uh, Sam, is there anything you want to share before we close the recording? So, um, not 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 a lot. Just this week, I'll be working on um, finalizing the infrastructure and release processes. So, I might be about like pinging different people to understand their path and deployment better. Uh, mainly search, because apparently he search. Yeah, the, the guy that has most information. All right, Jeremiah, anything from your side? No, just keep up the great work, guys, and great job on Substrate Builders presentation. We had Substrate Builders presentation today. It was great. Yeah, thanks, everyone. Uh, we'll see you next week with the same time and the same place.